All right, guys, let's welcome Lee Kakati to the Talk To Me podcast here. Man, Lee, how are you doing today? Real good, man. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. Well, first off, uh, right before we jumped on, uh, I see that you guys were awarded your first platinum uh, certificate here in the States oh. for a tour to pieces, man. So right tell on. me about Thank that, you. man. Platinum record, dude. That's awesome. It's crazy. I mean, a huge, huge accomplishment to be able to get any kind of plaques in this day and age is, is very, very challenging. But uh, it's just a testament of time to the hard work that the, the old school catalog we built all those years ago and, and the fact that it still resonates with people to this day. It's it's uh, that's a dream, man. That's a dream. We're super grateful and uh, super, uh, um, you know, obviously blessed to have this great fan base that we do. And, you know, it's a win for not just us, but for them as well. I mean, Torn to Pieces is a song that as we play it every night, it's just uh, it's it's emotional. It's emotional. The connections people have and to know you're not alone. We've all lost someone close to us and uh, to have a song that can, uh, you know, give a reminder to those people that we love and we miss and, and sometimes wish we were at these shows with us is it, it, it's a cool thing. And then to be able to put a small piece of positivity out there with that song and to have a go platinum, it's a huge win, man. We're grateful. Are you going to do the, the whole the whole deal, you know, get the plaques made up, you know, do the whole presentation, all that good stuff. You got to, right? I'm sure. I mean, that's the, that, that would be the first platinum one. So it's got to be like, it's got to be like 18 feet tall. You know what I mean? The size of the wall. <laughs> do the front yard so make sure everybody that drives by sees yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, platinum plaques now, they almost feel like diamond plaques, right? So it's just, right. they're hard to come by. So you just kind of, you just kind of try, you know, tr try to make it special. And uh, so I know I'm sure we'll do something cool. That is a testament to you guys, though, because I mean, Pop People is one of those bands that just just constantly chugging and and churning yeah. and, and out and doing something, man. So so yeah. it's definitely uh, like you said, a testament to the fans, to the band, to everyone in the Pop People world. It is, man. And we're very blue collar. I mean, uh, coming up from the time in the era when we came up, even at radio, even though radio's changed, there's not a lot of bands from our area that are still left. So you know, we want to do our part to keep becoming closer to that headliner band and. And just putting out great music, and the only way to do that is the the Midwest way that we all grew up on doing it, and that's just hard work. Just keeping keeping it, just keeping staying relevant, man. Just keeping new stuff coming, uh, not being worried about what others want you to do or think that you should do. You just keep pushing. We keep trying to better our ourselves. I mean, in the competitive landscape that it is, um, the true co competition comes with bettering your last effort, right, and growing and just staying around. So. I think as you get a little bit older in the game, you, you understand that you mature a little bit in that process. Still, you're competitive and you're hungry. Doing great. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you're doing great. You know, but, uh, yeah, see, so come with Tell me you need a refill on that sweet tea, man. I need it. Hold on. Let me get a sip of that sweet tea. You know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, in the South today. So it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's great, man. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just, it's just a climb. And we're just uh, we're we're definitely not afraid of that uh, that grind, and and we just keep trying to just get better every year, every album, and uh, we're certainly excited about this new effort we got coming. The Animal Instinct yeah. tour, man. Talk about it with uh, Bad Wolves. Yeah. How is that going, man? It's been incredible. I mean, Oni starting the tour off. I mean, these guys are just on the climb. Just such an, an insane opening band. They, they're really they've been around a while, but they're just really climbing lately. They're they're really driven, really dedicated. Love watching those guys. And then um some hardcore rocker guys, Sierra Pilot from Canada. These guys have been really climbing as well. It's their second tour with us. Um, great, gr great, great gentlemen, man. The, the 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 pride they have for just growing and learning is is uh it's refreshing, man. We're learning from these 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 younger bands just as much as any of the older great bands, you know. So there's so much to learn. And then of course, Bad Wolves. I mean, need no introduction. I mean, obviously, so many hit songs. Uh, great guys. The camaraderie we have already with them has been uh has been awesome. It's been refreshing, you know, to to be able to give our fan base. Uh, so many songs that they're familiar with. I mean, so many hit radio hit songs in one night. It's uh, is definitely I, it, you're not going to find that just every day around the corner on a tour for the price point. It's uh, it's super awesome. Uh, it's been incredible thus far. We're about halfway through, so still um some uh, some some awesome shows to come. But um, if you're on the fence and you get out there, check out this tour. It's been it's been amazing. So um, definitely looking forward to finishing strong with these guys and uh, you know, start uh, getting to 2025 on, on a good note. When you talk about learning from from younger bands, are you talking about like their their work ethic with like social media? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and does it blow you away like how much you're like, oh crap, I got to make another reel, I got to make another this, yeah. I got to make a post yeah. about that. You're like, it's like a second yeah. or third or fourth job. Yeah, I mean, I think any band from our era will tell you we hate it. I mean, we didn't get into this to take a bunch <laughs> of selfies, right? Because then you get yelled if you're not in the video, you're not in. You know, the fans want to see. you. Obviously, I'm the singer, so they want to see me and. That's the last thing I want to do is, is is show my face around, uh, you know, before before dinner time. You know what I mean? Right. So you just hibernate. <laughs> so any singer rests his voice till about showtime, you know, especially on a show day. But, you know, it's a part of it. And, and just the work ethic, the way that they're so driven with their technology, 
um, the effects and the equipment that are out nowadays, it's just so incredible. And the way that the, I know from our area, right, we just set up our equipment and play. And uh, it's just, there's so much more to it now. There's so many fun effects. There's so many things that you can do with your creativity to to make sure that you're having fun and keep it, you know, if you're playing the same guitar tone, your whole career gets stale. You know, if you're singing on the same vocal compression rate, I mean, it's just, there's so many things now that these younger guys are doing to be like, wow, that's that's interesting. Let's try, wow. It's, and it just totally triggers a whole different melody vibe. Or uh, it, it just it's just interesting how e even what you're learning out here in the field it just really changes the dynamic when you're in the in the uh, sessions and you're writing. So it's uh it's been a lot of fun, man, just to like not not put any boundaries on the band and put any boundaries on myself. And, and and that can be challenging when you've had the success we've had. We've had, you know, so many we've been blessed to have so many hit songs and our set list is is definitely stacked. But you know, now kind of weeding out that th those songs that we don't want to play, whether they're hits or not. Like, we don't care. Like, we, we, we know where we want to take this band in the future, and we want to move towards that. I mean, things are changing. Obviously, since COVID, bands changed. I mean, that's the reality. I mean, when Torn to Pieces was written, we're a totally different band now, you know? And arguably, do we really need another Torn to Pieces? I mean, we play it every night. You know, how many of those can you play before it's put you to sleep? You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> these festivals, especially talking about Danny Wimmer festivals, I mean, there's not room for ballads sometimes. You got a half an hour set, maybe 40 minutes set. You want to just, from a band perspective, you want to blow through that set, high energy, high octane, and just get with the rest of the bands that do with those kind of things. You know, you start playing some of those ballads and sleepers. It's like, uh. so, you know, it's a, it's a thin line. You know, when you've had success about juggling that set list, making the perfect set list, balancing the new and the old school poppy while respecting the old fans, but still being open to create new fans. I mean, you have to create your career, you have to create the longevity of your career. You have to somehow figure out a way to get the youth at all levels to come see your show. Because at some point, I mean, it's our 18th year, you know, so at some point, those older fans have already seen us play. You know, yeah, you want to try to convince them to come back out because we're a different band, but some may, some may not. So you have an opportunity to get this new audience to grow it, um, consume it, live it, cater to it. And, and you do that by, you know, again, just being open-minded to, you know, things that they might be interested in. Things that they they were interested in in 2007 when we started isn't necessarily what the 20 and 30 year olds interested in 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 2024 2025. So it's it, arguably what we're even we're not even interested in the same things we were interested <laughs> back then, right? So it's like uh, it's just it's just been a lot of fun, man. And uh, I know the band we're, we're we've been real close closer than ever as far as supporting each other. And I think COVID had there was some positive that came out of that. You know, I mean, the people that stayed that really wanted to be here and grind stayed. The people that didn't left. You know, what I mean, and that's okay. I mean, it's. I think what people don't always understand is that rock and roll is very much a lifestyle genre. Like it's, it, it, you can either afford to do it or you can't. And that doesn't necessarily mean financially, like mentally coping, like it, it's hard. Like you got to clean the toilets. I say, you got to work on the uh, genre, rock and metal. We work on the weekends. We work uh, on, on holidays. You know what I mean? We don't have like what the pop genres get where they get to, you know, play one tour a year and make the money and just sit out for a year or two. No, no. We have to keep the lights on. We have to play. And not necessarily even just for the band members. We have to pay to keep our crew. We have to pay to keep our team. So or we have to play to keep those elements going so we can continue to do, you know, the things we love. And that's creating music and getting out there and touring on. So there's a lot of variables that you have to understand as you move forward and dive in. And, and as, you know, a team collectively off the stage, we've been doing a, a much better job at, at catering to those nuances of the band and the business to make sure that, those are lined up so we can do the uh, more fun things like creating the music and getting it out there. But if you don't have that stuff cleaned up, you can really make it challenging to do the, to focus on the things and the main reason why you're there and the music. So I know that in those middle years of pop evil, we really struggled with uh, balancing that and, you know, the band and the music struggled. So, you know, it, it just, uh, we're trying to clean that stuff up and, and really dive in. And we've done a great job since COVID to really uh, trim the fat and, and really get focused on the things that matter the most. And it's it's definitely a new era of pop evil. It feels like it, hence the new logo, the new music. I mean, it is just a, a very positive uh, energy around the camp. And we're just so excited to uh, show that to everyone that wants to see it. And then, of course, welcome uh, new fans to get on board and, and prove it to them, man. I mean, you got to prove it to the people these days. I mean, the social media era, people want what they want. They want it now. And, and uh, they don't have time to waste. Dude. They got time to make them wait. They're going to the next. So it is kind of what it is. Yeah, when I, when I turned on what remains like i was like oh that's what i'm talking yeah. about you know like it's, yeah. it's it's definitely uh uh much heavier stuff for pop people from from sure. you know, what i what i've listened to over the years man so yeah. so talk about the talk about the song and then obviously talk about working with cody quistad from wage war man because yeah. I've, I've had him on the podcast a ton i've told it to his face i was like dude the amount of times yeah. i get press releases now that say yeah. 
and the band worked with Cody on this new album, yeah. this new song. Yeah. I'm just like, dude, you're everywhere, yeah. man. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, he's incredible, incredible, ta incredibly talented uh, individual. I mean, and the thing about Cody that's interesting is he's got his nose to the grind. It's not like just working with any other producer. I mean, he's touring, right? Obviously, Wage War is crushing it right now, and, and uh, he's a big part of that. So he understands what it's like to take these songs that you write to the stage. He understands the feedback and, and, and the energy that, that is demanded from your audience and expected from your old school fans, but still trying to cater to these new fans, you know? I mean, and uh, having those discussions with Cody early on, I know we tried to work with each other on our last Skeletons album, but we just, he had a couple songs I listened to. It just didn't feel like me. I was like, look, let's maybe if we get time next album, I wanted to create stuff for fresh. You know, I wanted something right in the room with him and I that we were just coming up with together. And um, finally had the opportunity um, at the start of this new album and uh, came up with, uh, I remember, we did one song first and it was cool. I mean, I was super uh, digging it and it's on the album actually. And I was excited, but I was like, okay, you know, I wonder what we can do. I wonder if we can push it a little bit. And I remember he wrote, he, we were dialing in halfway through this riff and I'm like, nah, man, I'm not feeling this, man. And uh, again, it's my first time really working with him. So I didn't want to, I don't want right. to put, I don't know how hard I can push, you know? And uh, I'm like, no, I, I don't know if I like that. I want a little more like the Cody. I want some Cody, man. Give me some of your Cody <laughs> stuff, you know? And he goes, we mean something like this. And of course it ends up being the riff of what remains and wrote the song in 20, literally 20 minutes. You know, when you feel a song like that, sometimes it comes out and there's a lot of mental healing that I didn't even know I had to let out um, with all the demons that every band has just kind of getting with any demons the lead singer has. I mean, I got them, but just like everyone else, right? You just kind of got to let that stuff out. And it just came out. And what remains ended up being that song that just kind of spearheaded the rest of this entire album. So we're so grateful for Cody and his, uh, his just his work ethic. He's su such a hard worker, but he's so kind, man. He's, he's always open to just kind of hear you out, listen, not pushing anything he wants it to be, you know, or at least for me, he wanted it to be pop evil. You know, he was always so respectful about what we've done in the past, but so open to trying to take it to another level, you know? So we had a lot of those discussions. Um, that of course kicked it over to the band. The band flipped immediately. You know, obviously the band's just at a heavier place, right? We're just all, again, since COVID, I think there's just more energy. Festivals are getting more metal. Radio's getting more metal. So, you know, the metal side in Pop Evil was always caged because radio wouldn't play that stuff back then. We're a radio band. So, you know, we just we had to get in where you fit in sometimes, man. And, and uh, you know, we're just a bunch of Midwest guys trying to catch a break just like everyone else. So that was our break. So fine, you want us to write Ballads? We'll write ballads. Like, I can write whatever you need me to do. But that didn't mean in those days that it was going to be used. In those days, women, Danny was just starting those festivals. Now they've become such an iconic part of you. I mean, in those days, the European festival was 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 the elite status, like, dream you'd want to be at. Oh, yeah. Now, Danny's changed the game. Like, these American rock festivals, the metal festivals that he does, are, are just as good, if not better. You know what I mean? So he's definitely grown. Um, he's definitely made an outlet for not just rock bands and radio rock bands, but for metal bands as well. I mean, you see, you see the lineups. I mean, obviously even for people coming back. So it's been, it's been awesome to see, you know, so I'm really excited about just where rock is, where metal is and the opportunity to be able to be heavier. I mean, to have a song like what remains number eight on the charts. I mean, that would have been unheard of just maybe five to seven years ago. So, you know, we've gradually, we've gradually been doing that with Waking Lions, you know, and now it's almost been a progression because again, we don't want to alienate our older fans. We love them. They've been gracious to us and they've been with us all these years. Balancing that has been a bit of a challenge and, and uh, so it's been an evolution as well. And I think that you're going to see, and it's just, it's not even just the heavier elements on the guitar. It's just heavier themes. I mean, the next single is called Death Walk. I mean, we're all on one. You know what I mean? I mean, things that I wouldn't have said just, just an album ago. You know, I mean, I, I'm not afraid to say now in a way. And not that you're afraid to say it, but it just feels like, yeah, let's do it. I'm not, it just feels like the right time, right? It just feels like the right uh, energy for me personally off the stage. It's more about being like where you're at off the stage than it is on the stage, you know? And obviously the guys now, I mean, the this evolution of this new lineup, I mean, bringing in Joey and Blake from, uh, from Egypt Central and Devour the Day to be part of Pop Evil. I mean, those guys brought us on our first tour um, back in 07 when uh, they were in Egypt Central. So, I mean, we're all kind of cut off the same cloth. We're all, we all are, we all are that person at our position. We're not trying to compete. There's no jealousies. There's no animosities. So it's just a really healthy organic space where we're all trying to push each other's position and making sure we get that best version of ourselves out. So it's been a lot of fun, man. I mean, when you're really working towards a common goal and you're really able to dissect those little nuances that are your position, the lead singer, the guitar players, the bass, the drums, like when you can really dive into those parts collectively as a unit, 
um, the music's just better. And, and, and we really feel like this is that next progression where you'll be able, a fan will be able to see whether you like Pop Evil or not, whether we're your favorite band or not. You can certainly listen to this music and go, okay, look, yeah, we see the growth. You know, like, let's see what they got. You know, so that's hopefully what we're doing. We want to prove to those fans that are on the fence or on the, uh, uh, willing to give us a chance that, hey, we, we're going to work for them, man. We want to prove that we want to prove our spot. And, and you know, there's just, there, there's not that many bands out there, man, that, that are really in a position where we can do these tours and do these big festivals. We want to be one that's there around for the long for the test of time and not one that just goes away. So, you know, we, we, we want to do our part to influence that next generation and be a part. And, and, you know, that comes with a lot of hard work and dedication. And uh, we feel like this album's that next step in that right direction for pop people. Yeah, man, I think a lot of stuff there to, uh, to, to, to digest there. But, you know, one thing with the older fans, too, you got to you got to wonder because, you know, mm-hmm. now they're like, if you don't play on a Tuesday night, they can't come yeah. out because they got kids and they got bills and they got jobs and stuff. So you got to keep churning that uh churning that fan base kind of getting a little bit younger a little bit more uh apt to come out on a tuesday wednesday night man and um and being out with bad wolves i think is a is is they're they're another band in that where they have some super heavy crushers and then they've got the 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 radio singles too man so i think it's i think it's awesome where you can kind of kind of live in both worlds you know have a radio single but also have some some crushers yeah absolutely absolutely um let's talk about the video real quick before we get out of here uh the video yeah. for uh for what remains man it, it, it's it's like a damn mo- you know motion picture man it's it's, oh, it's crazy man so do you love uh you love making videos and, and it seems like a lot went into this one yeah i hate making videos actually but um <laughs> but uh <laughs> you know, it's so stressful it's so stressful but uh you know the videos start in when in my head when you write this, when i'm writing the songs right you, you got this idea because you're trying to tell a story you know and whether that story is about you or about something or someone else you're really trying to um, paint that story in four to five minutes or under five, usually if it's a ra- if it's a single, right? So you want you want to like try to get as maximize that um, that visual in your head so you can tell it, right? Like in 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 song and in melody through melody. So I, I know when we sat down, I had I had this idea. Of course, your ideas in your head uh, don't have any budget, so they're 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 definitely free. Your ideas, right? So you you build these lavish like you know landscapes and 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 visuals in your head, and then of course you try to explain that to someone, and sometimes you nail it, sometimes you fall short. But um, you know, having an opportunity, we found out early that we were going to be doing these videos with Sam Shapiro, who I'm I'm a ginormous fan of. He's such an incredible director, an incredible artist, He's just a visionary, you know. So I remember spending uh, hours on the phone with with uh, Sam early on, just kind of telling him about you know where my head was at when I wrote the song and, and you know what I was thinking, and and he said, "Great, got it." Came back to me and tried to obviously put a budget on it, make sure that we could dial this in, make it uh, financially feasible for the band. Excuse me for Pop Evil to um be able to make this uh, come to life. And, um, you know, then he kind of gives us the storyboards, right? Any director gives the storyboards. You're like, okay, that sounds sweet. I remember saying to him, Sam, I have no, um, I have no idea really what you're talking about, but it sounds cool to me. I'm going to trust you. And he did, um, luckily with Sam, I've worked with him so much that I know everything he does. I usually just love. So uh, um, we did the Eye of the Storm video on the last album with him as well. So I'm like, you know, I don't totally know, but I know it'll be sweet. I just, I just want this, or I want these, this, these little things like, and he's like, yeah, they'll be fine. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. Let's just go. And then we show up there that day and he's got this lavish set. Looks like you're in the movie, the alien, you know what I mean? And I'm dangling up on this thing. And he's like, yeah, we got your stunt double and we got, you know, you're going to be hanging. I'm like, oh my God, can I do this stunts? You know, so we're back and forth and, you know, getting hung up and getting dropped. And it was just, man, I mean, it was so fun. It was grueling. I remember you. I must have slept for about 14 hours that next morning, though, because you just, you're just, your body's beat, you know, and it's such a long day. And, and uh, I had to get up and do another. I think we did three videos. So we, we, did, we did all of them pretty much, uh, at least to get this album a head start, because it's just too tough when we're on tour to get, get back in and then shift gears. I, I hate doing that. I like, for me, I like when I'm touring, focus on touring. When I'm writing, focus on writing. Do videos, get it done, you know, so I can just kind of, you know, focus on the next. Because business, business is all about the next. I'm already writing the next album. You know, so it's just, uh, it's just a, everyone's different, man. Every writer, every singer, every band, you know, they got their formula, right, that they do and they follow. And that's just been the thing that's worked for me that keeps my sanity. And, uh, but it was just incredible, the video. The next one's coming out, um, uh, Death Walk here um, soon. Or if you're watching it, maybe it's already out. It's Death Walk. You need to watch. It is insane. I mean, just, just <laughs> the visionary of Sam and what he is. I remember him telling me that script, too. So I can't wait for you to see that one as well. But... What remains definitely when you think about the pop evil catalog and the music videos is definitely one uh, 
that's my favorite and i'm sure it's a uh, you're going to become two more and more of uh, our fan favorite so uh already on the video walls when you come see us live you get a little elements of the video too so it's awesome to kind of bring that to life to the stage as well so it's been a lot of fun man and uh super stoked about just the song growing and seeing how it grows with the fan base over the years man all right man last question uh as a detroit lions fan how much fun are you having the last couple of years religious i feel like <laughs> everything in my wardrobe right now is detroit lions. <laughs> Yeah, I'm having a blast, man. I mean, yeah, if you don't know, I'm I'm a religious sports guy, but I scrape all sports away if it comes to Detroit Lion football has always been my my favorite, right? Because I think growing up, I was always with my dad, my mom, my bro. We were always watching Barry Sanders, and it was always a thing that we did as a family. You know, we were always so scattered doing everything, but we'd always break and stop for, you know, Lion football on Sunday. We'd always kind of find the time to do that. So it's not just about the team. It was just a constant reminder of just my family and how I grew up, you know, it was, uh, it was such a positive lifeline for us. And so to finally now have the team actually kind of relevant, you know, I'm not going to get too cocky yet. So we went, I want a Super Bowl before I get like, okay, admit that we're good, but certainly a lot of fun to watch. And, and uh, I definitely, um, I think I lost a couple of days out of my life with that game last weekend, but, um, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great, man. It's been awesome. It's super exciting for the city and uh, certainly uh, my close friends and family, I just seeing them excited and, actually being to have something to do in December because, you know, Michigan winners are boring. So, you know, to actually have a Lions or a game to watch where we actually are relevant and actually care about it rather than having to watch the uh, Kansas City Chiefs for another year, you know. So uh, it'd be great to have a little bit of Lions uh, go as far as possible again this year in the, in the playoffs. So we'll see. Well, as a lifelong Titans fan, uh, you can you can glo- uh, glo- uh, yeah. gloat all you want on me this week or this uh, this season. No, I, I like the Titans. I'm in Nashville at the moment, actually. So, I mean, nice. I... Uh, I, I like the Titans. I respect the Titans. I was a I was an Aaron McNair fan back in the day too. So they were my favorite, obviously, because Lions. But you always have those teams you kind of dig. You don't know why. Yeah. And it was the Dolphins for me and the Titans. I don't know why. But there um, we go. <laughs> no, no reason. But uh, so I got I got props. You I understand the Titans' pain. I mean, hopefully you guys get this quarterback situation figured out, and you guys are back in 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 in, in a competitive manner here soon for sure. Yeah, I had some Lions fans reach out to me and they said, uh, sorry yeah. about last week. And I'm like, why are you bringing up old stuff? Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. well, I was like, well, I'm sorry for Thanksgiving 2008. How about that? <laughs> you know, like, and they were like, touche. <laughs> yeah, touche. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, fair cool, enough. man. Well, uh, yeah. you know, uh, safe travels out on the road with uh, Bad Wolves. And, uh, yeah. and and once again, man, what remains is awesome. Uh, uh, thank you. Great new stuff. Can't wait for all the, the, the rest of the stuff. This has been this has been a lot of fun. And uh, just take care, Lee, man. Take care out there. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for... Uh, uh, being flexible with my schedule and I can't wait. Thank you to you guys. Hopefully see you out on the road and uh, hope otherwise see you on another podcast right here. Stay tuned. Pop evil coming soon. <laughs>